I just rode the first ever inaugural DKXL, which is 350 miles unsupported, self-supported. So that meant carrying with you what you need and resupply along the way. I was banking on uh, years of experience of expedition riding and doing long distance stuff, but uh, bike packing is a little different because you've got to fit everything onto your bike and onto your body. So I'm going to go a little bit through um, the bike I rode, the gear I used for the DKXL. Um, hopefully you can take a few tips and maybe head out on your next bike packing adventure. So I guess I'll start first with the bike. Um, I rode the Niner RLT 9 RDO and RLT stands for Road Less Traveled. So um, it's an easy way to remember that this bike is all about getting off the road less traveled. Gravel away from towns. Um, the wheels that I ran are from Envy. They're brand new launched uh, this weekend. They're gravel series wheels. Um, Maxxis Rambler tires. Um, SRAM, I had a cork power meter on there. I'll publish my stats later. I don't know if I was really cranking out the power at hour 27, but it's interesting to record all that stuff. I did go down in chain ring size because of the distance of this event. So I normally ride a 44 in the front. I went to a 42. I was really glad I did that. Um, Crank Brothers pedals. Um, and the way that I set up the bike here, uh, basically when you're riding or when I'm riding, the whole idea is efficiency and not stopping that often. And so I try to make sure things are accessible while I'm on the bike. So in the back here, uh, this is where I keep my tools, mechanical stuff, um, the things I hope that I'm never going to use. Um, <laughs> for bike repair and it's all in this tiny little tool roll. So it's pretty simple, but there's quite a lot in here from um, a chain link to extra brake pads, um, tire plugs for sidewall tears, tire boots, duct tape, zip ties, extra pedal cleats. Um, so that's all laid out in this nice little roll, nice and tidy. So if I do have to get into mechanicals, I can get that really quickly and um, pull that out of there. On this side is kind of the focus in general is to keep the weight on your bike and not on your body. So what I had in this side pouch is extra tubes um, for flats. Kansas is known for chewing up tires. I had no flats, no mechanicals. The bike was perfect. Um, and I put them all in Ziploc bags because there's a lot of vibration in there. So you want to protect the tube. I have batteries in here for my light at night and then water I put in this pocket and I use these little camelback water bags that what I really like about these is when they're empty they don't take up any space and you can kind of fit them in anywhere so those little water flask tubes in that one also had um, hydration here on the bike and also in my camelback chase vest so overall i mean i think there was a hundred mile stretch overnight between the um mini marts casey's general stores and so i had the capacity to carry uh, about 140 ounces of water and i calculated that based on miles per hour distances and figured out how much i need to carry i didn't fill up that much every time but over the long stretch overnight i did um let's see in this top pocket. This is where I keep all my snacks. Um, so this is kind of like the food trough um, that I can have easy access to to be eating all the time. This little pocket is my technology pocket. And so the cool thing about this bike, um, batteries are really heavy. And so I run a generator hub on here, um, sine wave. Envy built up this wheel for me, so basically, Every time I'm moving and pedaling, I'm generating power. And that's coming up through the bike to this little USB port right here, which is charging my Garmin, my phone, some lights, whatever I need. So the faster you go, the more power you get, which is pretty cool. A Garmin 1030 for navigation. And then, yeah, in the technology pocket here is 
GoPro batteries, <laughs> stuff like that. A little iPhone cord. So really I could just have my phone stuck right in there. And on my phone, I mean, mostly I had that. I had it turned off in airplane mode, but I have it because I want to take some pictures. And I also had it with um, a backup map on there. And then the third sort of backup navigation I had, a very old school set of paper maps. So I had this as a backup in my Camelback. Let's see, also in my Camelback, a small first aid kit with sunscreen, chamois cream, some duct tape, some uh, um, butterfly uh, bandages, just a few small items in case there's an emergency. Um, this is the only extra item of clothing I brought was one really thin windbreaker. Um, there were storms out there in the night. I didn't get them, but um, yeah, it was really hot temperatures, so sort of went without a lot of extra clothing. A backup headlamp. And the headlamp's really great too. I mean, you've got lights on the bike, but the headlamp is something for your head is pretty important if you need to do any bike maintenance because you need to, you need to look at the bike. And obviously a light on the front is gonna help you. So headlamp is always a nice backup for something like this. Um, Clear sunglass lenses for nighttime, sun sleeves for the sun, bike gloves, um, my Garmin inReach, this is my tracking device, it was kind of fun. If you followed along on this race, you could see there is the website, you could see our little dots moving along. So what's really cool about this device is it tracks you for your friends and family back home, but it's also an emergency beacon. So I can send an SOS message to my husband or whatever if something does happen out there and it doesn't rely on cell coverage. So this is a nice little item if you're gonna go do some backcountry adventures of your own, really making sure that you have maps, that you have a bailout system, that you have um, some first aid, you have an emergency plan. And luckily I didn't need to use any of that. And then where I'm carrying all this is in the Camelback Chase vest. And what I really like about this vest, one, it carries 50 ounces of water and a few other things, but it also lets me have accessibility on the bike with my stuff right here. So I generally keep my phone in this pocket. I've got my money to go into the convenience stores and buy food and drink, but everything's pretty tidy so that I don't have to really mess around and get into the bags too much. And water, of course. Okay, so back to the bike. Um, Garmin, a light, uh, Garmin light on the front. And then in this other side pocket, on the other side of the bike, this is where I had um, CO2, uh, some flat tire changing stuff, and my bike tool. And I keep this out of this pack just because sometimes you gotta make quick adjustments on the fly and I want the bike tool to be available. And then I also carry a proper Leatherman with pliers and um, I don't know, you just never know what you might need to fix out there. And sometimes a bike tool doesn't have everything you need. Tire plugs again and um, and CO2s. So out on the course, I was actually really lucky. I had no mechanicals. I had um, no body issues, no cramping. I mean, I can't really, I got lucky, I think. I mean, the, <laughs> a race like this, you can prepare as much as you want and then things happen. Crashes happen. Um, you know, one of the top women in the field crashed, unfortunately. Another had a knee injury and so, these ultra endurance events, there's so many variables that really my strategy is to try to control the controllables so that when you're out there, thing like a deer running in front of you, which happened to me, an armadillo running in front of you, which happened, um, you can't really control those things. But what you can control is how you're hydrating, how your nutrition is going, how you're organizing the things on the bike and that kind of, sort of attention to detail prior to the race really helps me f just focus on pedaling when I'm in the race. I'm not worried about my navigation. I'm not worried if I have enough electrolyte tablets, those kind of things. So it's always a little hectic planning before the race to get it all together um, because I really like to cover every detail, um, but then it pays off in something like this and with a win at the first ever DKXL, which 
I'm pretty proud of. I'm ready for a rest day. <laughs>